morning everyone! Alright, so this has been a long time requested video and I have been just procrastinating on getting to it and it took me a while to compile all the footage for this but I'm gonna get to it today, I'm gonna get through it and the... There you have it, fun! They're gonna throw all their toys on the floor. Uh, the, the video topic we're going through today is behavior and this is are going to be short. There's going to be a lot that I'm skipping over or missing and it's because they're kind of more obvious things. But I'm just going to go through some of the basics and I'm mainly going to focus on signs of aggression and signs of fear and just really the things that I think are most important for us to recognize. And do remember that it's different for every species. Some species what may be a sign of aggression is actually a sign of excitement or stimulation. So you know, just you really need to read your bird and start to develop a better understanding of your specific bird because they all kind of communicate a little differently with their body language. So I'm just going to jump right in because this is going to be a really long video otherwise and let's get right to it. I'm going to pop my face in that corner and let's get going. So first thing we're going to go over is aggression and the first uh, sign that's going to sh show up here is a cockatiel running away from a hand. So this is actually a sign of fear. And it's really obvious what this cockatiel is doing. Their owner is walking up to them and they're leaving. And I cut out the sound in this video so you could hear me talking. But what's happening is the owner is asking their cockatiel to step up and the cockatiel is leaving the situation. It doesn't want to be there. It's trying to tell the person, no, leave me alone. I don't want to be with you right now. And it could be because they're holding a camera, maybe they're scared of the camera, or it could simply be that they're not all too fond of their caretaker. So that's the first sign, is the bird just actively wanting to leave the situation. And that's generally what they'll do whenever they're scared or whenever they want don't want to be touched, is they will just walk away. And so when that happens, you just leave them be. You leave them alone, you let them do whatever they want to do, and you just you let them, you listen to that, them wanting to leave and not want to be touched, and you listen to that and you leave them alone. So the next one is eye pinning, and this is one of those behaviors that can be both aggression and excitement. In the video clip I show, it's an Indian ringneck who's very stimulated, very excited, he's very happy, he's getting scratches, and so obviously in this it's not a sign of aggression with him, it's a sign of him being excited and happy. But if some birds will do that when they're being highly aggressive. They'll start to pin their eyes and the pupils will dilate. They'll get, you know, bigger and smaller and this is typically accompanied by other signs such as just the back of the neck feathers going up and swaying a bit. Typically that's when eye pinning will happen. If you do see your bird's eyes pinning and you're not doing anything that could be stimulating them, it's best to just back off from the situation and, you know, let them calm down and relax. So the next one is swaying, and this video clip I have is kind of an unfair one. I couldn't find an accurate representation of what I was looking for. I was actually looking for an African Grey doing it, because typically they'll show it mostly when they're being a bit aggressive. But this guy is kind of showing a mix of emotions. I'm going to completely analyze this bird, what's going on here. So he's looking at himself in a mirror, and he's actually displaying a couple signs of aggression. Only the feathers on the back of his neck are fluffed, his tail is flaring, and he's not flaring it for balance because it's staying open the entire time. He is doing a little bit of that swaying motion, he's pacing, and he's, he's mainly reaching forward and doing that just because he wants to get to the bird across from him. So for him, it could be a little bit of confusion and excitement, so he's not sure how to display himself with this new bird, should he come off as friendly or should he come off as aggressive, so he's kind of just coming off as a mix of single, sig signals. But what you're looking for in a bird that's swaying is typically they will be presenting other signs of aggression. With African greys they typically cluck while they do it, and they'll kind of more so just kind of go like this and they'll sway back and forth and before they bite you and eye pitting might be occurring at that time. So this is kind of a weird one because this can also sort of be excitement or just general curiosity. Uh, this bird, I would say, is displaying a couple signs of aggression in here. He's more just showing that he's a little bit confused and doesn't know how to react to the bird across from him. And that's the main reason why we don't want mirrors around our birds, because they do send off mixed signals and greatly confuse our birds and create all sorts of problems. So next one we go over is lowering, and this is pretty obviously a sign of aggression. It can also be kind of more when they're scared and they've already run away. This is the same cockatiel from the first video. 
This bird already ran away from their owner, they didn't want to be near them, and as soon as their owner forced into them with their hand, they lowered themselves to the ground to protect their vital organs, and you can see his beak is opening up a little bit, and he's obviously telling his owner, no, leave me alone, I do not want you here, please go away, you know, don't bother me. So that's obviously a great precursor to a bite, is when they'll lower themselves to the ground. And warning bites. So cockatiels are especially prone to this, and budgies will do it too, is they'll lunge at you, but they won't actually bite you, or they'll just gently peck you. And this is them saying, okay, if you do not leave now, I will bite you and it will hurt. And in this instance, you can see the bird's holding its beak open, it's low to the ground, it's, you know, getting ready to bite you if you don't leave them alone. So they're gently, they don't want to bite you, they want to tell you to go away, so they'll lightly peck your hand or use your beak to, use their beak to move your hand, and they're just trying to, at that point, they're running out of options to tell you to go away. So they're narrowing it straight down to just going and biting you. <clears throat> so this next one is leaning, and this video was one that I struggled to watch because the entire video was these guys intentionally having a competition to see who could get bitten by this bird the most and who would last the longest without wimping out because it hurt. So this bird is displaying so many signs of aggression. Right here you can see it doesn't want the hand, it's leaning away from the hand, and then it goes in straight and bites them. And you'll notice there the bird was very obviously saying no, go away, it's leaning as far away from the hand as it possibly can, it's telling them, I don't want to be here, leave me alone. And at that point, they should have just left the bird alone. And the next one is a video that you've probably seen going around Tumblr or other social media, and this bird is extremely upset. Its tail is super, super flared, the feathers on the back of its neck are raised, it is swaying, and it's pacing. And you can see right there, it goes right for the person that's playing the instrument. It doesn't like it, it's telling the person it doesn't like it, it's telling them that it wants him to go away. And tail flaring is a major sign we can get, it's holding that tail so far out, it is telling you, stop what you are doing, I don't like it. And when you don't listen, it goes in and bites them. Okay, so those are kind of the main aggression signs that appear. There are others, but this video will be way too long if I mentioned all of them. So we're going to move into the next subject, which is nesting. And so all sorts of bre uh, breeding habits. So this is one that's commonly thought of as really cute, when it can be quite dangerous. So the video here is a couple of cockatiels, not cockatiels, sorry, sun conures, who want to go under the bed covers with this person and snuggle. And you'll notice that they go right into the dark crevice together. Both the birds want to go in, they want to nest, this is a breeding behavior, this is, you know, what they do in the wild, they'll crawl into, you know, cavities and trees and nest. And so this is a behavior we want to discourage, and, like, I think every bird species kind of does this, I know why guys have done it, I've worked with tons of birds who have done it as well, and so it's generally a behavior we really do want to discourage, regardless of really how old the bird is and what season it is, because this is just a major hormone stimulant, and continuing to do this will and cause all sorts of things such as, you know, aggression and egg laying and masturbation and all those bad things we really don't want to be dealing with, and it can be quite unhealthy for our birds. So the next one is masturbation, and this is a common video you'll find on the, on the internet, uh, commonly written as a dancing, you know, species. And sucks for them because this parrotlet is trying to do his business, and both female and male birds can masturbate. The males will try and rub their vent on something and have their tail flat down. The females will have their butt kind of up and their, their tail will be up, because those are the roles they play when mating. And so, again, that's something you want to discourage. If you see your bird trying to rub its butt on things, or maybe it's particularly doing that to a certain object, you want to remove that object, and you just want to discourage this. If they start to, you know, rub their vent on you or whatever, just put them down, just <laughs> eliminate yourself from the situation, and try and eliminate other hormone stimulants in the environment. So next thing I'm going to go over is, again, another thing that's commonly, you know, seen as cute on the internet, and it's regurgitation. And parrotlets are particularly popular for this, as it's commonly known as the wiggle neck. Uh, they will thrash their head from side to side and attempt to bring up food and give it to their owner. And uh, the Quaker here is doing a few behaviors that I'm going to address. And so you see there's a different form of regurgitation in which they bob their heads up and down. And the Quaker there is doing another behavior. He rubs his face on the object 
prior to actually bringing up his food. And when you see that, that indicates that that toy is a love toy. That's a toy they're particularly interested in and that, you know, they're pleasured being near. So when you see your bird rubbing its face all over a particular toy, not just like scratching, because I know if my birds get their faces wet, they'll rub their faces on toys to help, you know, dry off or scratch or whatever. That's not a love response. What we're looking for is just intentionally rubbing their faces or body parts on a particular object. And you can see right after that, the bird, you know, bobbed his head up and down, he regurgitated and, you know, put it all over his toy. And again, this is something we want to discourage because not only can it cause all sorts of infections, it also risks them being vitamin deficient because if they're bringing up their food, they're not eating it. And so you don't know what nutrients they're getting, what nutrients they aren't, and it can cause a lot of deficiencies and further health problems down the road. So the next thing we're going to go over is we're going to try and finish off on a good note here. So all the happy, good, comfortable signs. So we're going to go over preening, which is pretty straightforward. They'll grab feathers with their beaks and gently tuck at them and pull their beak down the length of the feather. Um, don't, uh, bleh, don't confuse this with feather picking or excessive preening in which they'll be kind of tugging at the feathers or they'll be over preening them a bit much and the feathers may start looking really tatty or broken. When that starts happening, you should go to your vet just to make sure there isn't something health related going on and then try and figure out why your bird is pulling out his feathers if there's, you know, not enough stimulation or if he's really nervous and break it down from there. So next one we're going to go over is preening their feet. And, you know, this is my little Mia and she's just, she's really obviously preening her foot with a purpose. She's gently pulling the scales off the side of her toes and she's obviously trying to get the scales off. What can happen with this behavior is something known as toe tugging, which isn't present in every species, but is pretty common amongst, you know, many of the ones we keep as pets. And this behavior, known as toe tugging, the bird will just be kind of grabbing its foot and just pulling at the toes, and this is a sign it's a really nervous behavior. It can be health related as well. So if your bird is doing that, you should see your vet and you should try and figure out what's going on, because it's kind of similar to plucking, in which is sort of uh, self-destruction of you know, so, just self-destruction. And so they'll be tugging and pulling at their feet and when this happens, you wanna make sure that you calm them down, you make sure they have enough stimulation, make sure they aren't overstimulated, make sure they're happy and content in their environment. Yeah, come here. All right, so the last behavior I'm gonna go, I mean, the next behavior is head bowing. And this is a journey and I personally worked with, you know, when I was at work and she's just leaning her head over for me, I'm offering her hand and asking if she would like some scritches, and she very kindly tilts her head over for me so I can scritch her head, and cockatiels are another one that do this a lot. A lot of species don't bow their head, like uh, parrotlets don't bow their head, I don't think budgies particularly do, they might, not quite as much. Um, so this is a really calm behavior, this is her telling me, okay, go ahead, you can touch my head, I'd like you to touch my head. Um, if she was lowering the rest of her body to the ground, or if her eyes were excessively pinning prior to scritching, or her tail was flaring, then it might be a sign of aggression. This is something a lot of birds do, especially cockatiels, during hormone season, and what will happen is they'll bow their head, and then when you go to scritch them, they'll flip and bite you. And this just happens purely because of hormones. It's just a lot of things driving them around the bend, so when they are doing that during hormone season, and if your bird has tried to bite you before, from doing that, it's probably best just to kind of leave them alone when they present that behavior. And the next one is scratching. So this is pretty pretty obvious. The bird uses his foot to scratch his head. Um, with smaller birds, they'll put their foot behind the wing. With larger birds, they'll keep the foot in front of their wing. And they're just kind of scratching off pennies that are still stuck to their head or any random little itch they may have there. Uh, yawning. So I'm going to go two roots with this. This can also be a hormonal thing, but not quite in the way it's presented here. So you're seeing a lot of very sleepy signs from this Amazon. He's, you know, fluffed up. He's, he just has a nice big yawn. So what can also happen that I couldn't find a video of, and I really wish I had, is repetitive yawning, in which they kind of stretch up their neck and open their beak, and it'll kind of look like they're yawning ten times over. Um, typically when that's happening, What's really happening is they're adjusting their crop, and sometimes they'll scratch their ear after it. I'm not quite sure why they scratch their ear, I haven't figured that out yet. But the repetitive yawning of stretching the head up can be them adjusting their crop, and it can also just maybe there's something stuck, in which case you should get them, you know, a drink of water or a little drop of olive oil if they continually do it and start seeming like they're having difficulty breathing. But typically it's just them adjusting their crop because things are a little uncomfortable or, 
things aren't quite going down right. And it's not generally something to be all too concerned about. If my guys do it, they'll go get a drink of water. And so that's pretty much that. Uh, the next sign is raised feathers. So again, where they raise the feathers is key. So in this cockatoo, his feathers are raised, you know, his little fluffin chops, his head feathers are all slightly puffed, his body and chest, he's just completely fluffed. So this is a sign of a very content, very happy bird. Um, when birds are just generally happy, their head feathers will be raised. So just the top of their heads will be very lightly puffed, and I I think I'll try and pop in the picture of Mia when she's happy, because you can really see her gently puffed head. And um, so that's just kind of that. But if the bird is mad, what will happen is this, the front part, the crest, will stay flat down, except for in like cockatiels. Cockatiels, it might come, come up. Uh, but generally birds that don't have crests, the top feathers of their head will stay flat down, but their neck feathers will raise up. And that's a sign of a very agitated, very angry bird. So do keep an eye on where the feathers are being fluffed on the body. Ugh. All right, and the last one is beak grinding, and people who are nude birds tend to get pretty concerned over this behavior because it's not something they really think of, and you can kind of think that maybe they've broken their beak, but I'm going to actually not talk for the next footage, so I'm going to quickly spew out speaking here, and basically what's happening is the African Grey is really content. You can see his head feathers are all raised, he's all fluffed up, his eyes are closing, He's quite content, and he's just gently rubbing his upper and lower mandible together to make little grinding noises. And this is a sign of a bird that's usually about to go to sleep that's incredibly comfortable. And it's called beak grinding because you can hear a little grinding noise. So I'm going to play that and not talk, just so that way you can hear it. Alright, so that's pretty much the basics of avian behavior. There's a lot of things I didn't go over and there's a lot of things that are different among different species and that's something I can't stress enough, especially with things like eye pinning and swaying. Because with Indian ringnecks, if they're eye pinning, they're probably excited and stimulated. But if it's an African grey who's pinning his eyes, he is very likely mad. But it really changes and it really depends on each bird because they all communicate just a little bit differently. So you really need to learn how to read and respect your own bird. And that's the main thing I'm going to emphasize here dealing with these behaviors is if they present any of those aggressive behaviors, don't recognize them and go, oh, he's mad and push past them. Step back and let him know that he's okay, he's in control of the situation. You know, your bird is okay, you're not going to be mean to him, you're not going to push him past those limits, you're not going to punish him. Just let him know that it's all good and, you know, just leave them be. And typically when they present those behaviors and you back off, the second time you approach, they'll willingly step up. Unless you've got a bird that's got excessive amount of ag aggression problems, typically just letting them kind of do their own thing and letting them calm down after they start presenting the signs of aggression is good. And so we really need to understand all these different types of body language because it can be quite tricky to learn all of them because they can be quite different than what we've learned from other species. So things like if you're holding your bird and their feet are really tense and straight out and their beaks are open and their eyes are wide, typically that could be presented as something that's really happy when it's got its mouth open and its eyes are wide. With birds, that means they're absolutely terrified, they're very stressed out. So if your bird's legs are extremely tense and their eyes are just peeled open, do know that they're probably afraid of you or they're probably very scared in that situation. And so we really need to understand all this body language, we really need to be able to read our birds and better communicate with them, because that's our job. We brought them in here to be able to understand them, and talk to them, and communicate with them, so that they can have a better, more enriching life. If we don't even put in the effort to try and understand what they're saying to us, they're not going to like us, and we're probably not going to end up liking them, because we're not trying to communicate with them, we're just trying to get them to do what we want them to do. And we really need to have a symbiotic relationship with these birds, we really need to be doing a lot of give and take and working together. And so the only way we can do that is if we learn to talk with them, if we learn to understand what they're trying to say to us. So do go over this video as many times as you need to. Do make sure you understand your bird's behavior, what it means, and what they're trying to say. Because something as simple as their eyes dilating can tell you a lot about a bird and just the way they hold themselves. So do make sure that you understand all of this, that 
you go over all the different types of body language and get experience. And that's the one thing I cannot emphasize enough. Before you get a bird, no matter how big or how small, get experience. You know, volunteer at a shelter or see a friend who has a bird. Or even if you just go down to a pet store and handle them for a while. That'll help you get experience to understand how to better work with these birds. Because, I mean, the number of people who have met by birds, like I've brought them with me for projects or presentations before, and the number of people who hold them and don't know how to hold a bird is just, it's kind of amazing, because they just, they don't know how to do it and it's just, it's unfamiliar to them. And when you're unfamiliar with a situation and you're uncomfortable with it, it really will affect your bird. Your bird can actually use that against you and try to get mad at you because you're not knowing what you're doing and it knows that you're scared, it knows that you're nervous, and so it might use that against you and start fake biting you just because you don't know what you're doing. So get that experience, you know, get around as many species as you can and really handle them so you can start to see these behaviors in reality. Because no amount of reading or watching videos is going to replace first-hand experience with birds. And nothing in my mind, nothing will ever change that in my mind, is experience is the number one best way to better understand birds and better be able to work with them if you've never worked with them before. So do make sure you get experience before you get a bird. Watching this video is not enough, it can help, but it will not replace first-hand experience going to shelters and dealing with birds of all different types of body languages so that way you know how to read your bird and respond to them in the future. So anyways, I hope this video helped and sorry it took me so long to actually make it. It was been pretty hectic lately and I was just procrastinating because of all the footage I had to go through. But anyways, I hope you learned something and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Uh, thank you so much for being here and I will see you all next time. Bye!